Okay, we're going to continue factoring today. In particular, today we're factoring trinomials, which means things that have three terms, with a equal to 1. So meaning, hey, they're not having really a number out front necessarily. So our task to start off with says, now marks, um, now that Optima's quilt shot is accepting rectangular blocks, their business keeps growing by leaps and bounds. Many customers want rectangular blocks that are bigger than the standard square block on one side. Sometimes they want one side of the block to be the standard X and the other side to be two inches bigger. Draw and label this block. So if we got the standard block, we've got the X squared. So that means it's two side lengths X and then one side that's two inches bigger. So it means on one side they're extending it plus two. So that's an X and an X. So we write the inside expression to be X squared plus X plus X is two X. If we wrote the outside expression, we'd have one side length is x, the other side length is s plus 2. For the record, yes, you can put that x in parentheses, that's just fine. Okay, some of the orders that Optima receives are in even more simplified algebraic form. Can you come up with two equivalent expressions? So this one's a little bit different, right? Like, maybe you want to just draw a generic rectangle for a minute. And hey, like, we're going to have x squared here. And do we know that we have to break it into like the x is on this part and the x is on this side? But we do know the total is 10. So this one, you may want to just look at this 11. So how can I get to the 11x by breaking it into two separate parts that when you multiply them together, you get 10? So you may say, well, if I broke it into 2 and 5, right? 2x and 5x, that would give me 10. But the problem is that's not going to be my 11. Okay, what if I broke it into, what other multiplies? 1 and 10. If I broke it down to 1 and 10, 1 and 10 does give me 10 there, and it does give me 11x total. So that would work. So if we break it down like that, and if you need to, like, go ahead and draw in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you can see it a little bit better, and that helps you. Sorry, not quite to scale there, right? Um, hey, if we look at the outside then, this would be x plus 10, and this is x plus 1. So our two equivalent expressions here would be that this is equal to x plus 10, x plus 1. And notice how we kind of broke up that 11x to two separate parts, the 10x and the 1x. Oh, this one's really similar. Notice this one is asking us to have x squared plus 7x plus 10. So same idea, right? We said, okay, well, if we want this to be x squared, right, this one to be 10, and I want to break it into two parts. The other one we tried doing, do you guys remember? We said 2x and a 5x because 2 times 5 is 10, but 5 plus 2 is 7. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I did one too many, sorry about that. And then this we break into two, so we do get 10 units here, but our two side lengths are x plus five, x plus two. So this one factors to x plus five, x plus two. Okay, I want you to notice something. Each time Optum receives an order, or area with the, an order with the area, I can speak, x squared plus bx plus c, she notices something about the side lengths. So in this case, recognize that c, right, is like your number 10, right? And then from that, how did we find the b, which is like your 11x and your 7x? So think for a moment and then come back. So as we look here, we were looking for things, right, the two side lengths that multiply to give us 10. So we want to multiply to get C and what do we want to do? We usually add the area on the inside, so we're adding to get B. So that's kind of the trick here. So as you look at for the factors of 10, that then add to 11, that's the easiest way to find these. 
So let's practice a few. Think of two numbers that multiply to give the top number and add to the bottom number. So think about 12. You want to say, hey, what multiplies to 12 but adds to 7? So maybe you say, well, 1 times 12, but that adds to 13. So maybe you say 2 times 6, but that adds to 8. So then maybe you try 3 times 4. Hey, that does add to 7. Okay, let's look at about negative 40. So maybe I start off and I'm like negative 8 plus 5. Well, that's 3. That doesn't work. What about 8? Even something like that, negative 8 plus 5, and you get negative 3, sorry. Like, notice that even if you switch the sign, you're still going to get positive 3, so that doesn't help us. So try something else. You're like, okay, what about 2 and 20? So negative 2 plus 20, that's 18, okay? Not quite. What about 10? Hey, okay, what about, you know, a negative 10 and a 4? That gives me negative 6. So right now, you know you have the right numbers, just your sign is incorrect. So let's switch that around. 10 times negative 4 is also negative 40, but when you add it, you get 6. Okay, there's two more there. You're going to try. The answers to them are a negative 7 and a positive 4, and then a negative 4 and a positive 4. Okay. As with any factoring problem, always look for a GCF, a greatest common factor, before you do it. So today we're going to look at trinomials, which is a polynomial that has exactly three terms. Although there are a few that give you zero as a coefficient, so we'll have to look at those and be careful. We are going to factor trinomials where a is 1. So meaning, hey, there's not usually a number out in front of x squared. Okay. If you like the steps, we've kind of just did it. You can draw the picture, or you can say, okay, rearrange it into our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. We want to give two numbers that multiply times a times c. So that's the a and the c, and add to b, so add to the middle number. Okay. Then we're going to rewrite those middle terms and do our factoring by grouping, which we practiced last time. So I usually draw it as a little x, just like this little diamond up here. Not the only way to do it, but that's what I do. So here we've got a 1 out front. So 1 times negative 21 is negative 21. And we're looking to add to positive 4. So you're saying, okay, 1 multiplies to negative 21 and adds to 4. And they were smart, so we're like, okay, 7 and 3. But one of them has to be negative. In this case, it's got to be a negative 3 because 7 plus negative 3 is what gives me positive 4. But 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. So I'm going to do something a little bit funky here. I'm going to rewrite that 4x as plus 7x minus 3x. So we're using the two numbers that we got in the sides here, right? And we rewrote that middle term. Okay. And then the last number of minus 21 will leave. Now let's do our factoring by grouping like we did before. So we've got an x here, and we've got negative 3 as my GCF. So when I divide both terms by x, <clears throat> I get x squared divided by x is x. 7x divided by x is 7. Then I get a negative 3 is my GCF. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is just 1x, so x. Negative 21 divided by negative 3 is positive 7. Looking good. Okay, so we pull out the common factor, which is x plus 3. Our leftovers are, sorry, x plus 7. Our leftovers are x minus 3. So this is it rewritten in factored form. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this time we're looking to multiply to be 28, take away 28 times 1, but there's no, 1 doesn't change anything, and adding to negative 11. Hmm, so notice here since it's a positive, like, Hey, 1 times 28, but that's not going to ever give me a negative. But what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. So we're looking for two negative numbers here. So I'm going to put a little negative on each side. So 1 and 28 is not going to give me 11. Let's see, 2 and 14 doesn't go. What about 4? 4 times 7. Okay, so a negative 4 times a negative 7. So I'm going to rewrite that middle term as negative 4x minus 7x plus 28. We're going to group the first two and the last two terms. The GCF of this first two terms is an x, so let's divide both by x. x squared divided by x is x, negative 4x divided by x is negative 4. I'm going to write the x out front. Okay, negative 7 looks like the GCF of those two. So I'm going to pull out a negative 7, 
negative 7 x divided by negative 7 is x. 28 divided by negative 7 is negative 4. So we'll pull out the common factor of x minus 4, and we're left with x minus 7 in the other set. Okay, I want you to pause because there's actually a shortcut here in this case. So let's be smart. We're going to work smarter rather than harder. Notice these numbers on the side, how do they relate there? Oh, the same exact numbers that you added or subtracted from x. These numbers on the side, how do they relate there? They're the same exact numbers that you subtract for x. So this one, we do have a little shortcut, right? It's always going to be x, x, and then you're going to have like those numbers that we put on either side here. So we're going to fill in the blank with plus or minus those numbers. I'll just put a little plus sign because if it's negative, we know plus and negative is the same as subtracting. Okay. This next one, though, you'll notice we've got a 3 out front. So there's probably a little short, little something else we have to do to begin with. Remember I said always look for a GCF. So if you've got 3x squared minus 9x plus 6, there is actually a 3 that you could take out of each of those. So I'm going to go ahead and divide each of these by 3. So when I do that, I get x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now notice it's like the trinomials we've seen, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to say what multiplies to 2 and adds to negative 3. So we do know they both have to be negative. And the only thing is I can think about that multiply to 2 are 2 and 1. So a negative 2 and a negative 1 does add to negative 3. Let's use our little shortcut. So that means it's x plus a negative 2, which we could say is x minus 2. x plus a negative 1, so that's x minus 1. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one's a little bit different, right? We're so used to seeing trinomials, so like x squared plus something x minus 16. Here, since I don't have any x's, what number would I put in front? I have actually zero x's. I would maybe write that in with that little place filler so we're used to it in the same format. So here we're looking for what multiplies to negative 16 and adds to zero. So in this case, we'd have a negative 4 and a positive 4, right? Negative 4 and positive 4 gives me negative 16, but it does add to 0. So we can just go ahead and use our shortcut. We'd have x plus a negative 4, so x minus 4, and x plus 4. Hey, we're on a roll. OK, so we're looking for what multiplies to 8 here and adds to 6. In general, here are these ones. Unless there's a number out front, we don't need to worry about GCFs. So what multiplies to 8? 1 and 8? That doesn't work. OK, what about 4 and 2? 4 and 2 does add to 6. So how does that factor? x plus 4, x plus 2. OK, how about on this one? We've got a negative 90. In this case, it just has an x. So that's really 1x, so adding to 1. So. The two numbers that work here are 10 and negative 9. So here we'd have x plus 10, x minus 9. Okay, this one you may notice again, oh hey, there's a 2 up front, and then we got a 4 and we got a 30. There's probably a GCF. In this case, they can each be divided by 2. So if I do that and take out a 2, I get x squared minus 2x minus 15. So we're saying what multiplies to negative 15 and adds to negative 2? Negative 5 and 3. So we still do need to write that 2 out front, but then our two sets of parentheses are x minus 5, x plus 3 from those two numbers we found. Okay, let's look at the next one. Here we got a 4x squared and we got 100. Both of those are divisible by 4, and you may kind of notice the number usually out in front of x squared. So we're going to write the 4 out front. We get x squared, 100 divided by 4 is 25. And this one, remember, we use that little trick that you can rewrite it as like 0x in the middle, because I think that will help you remember what we're trying to multiply. Because it's not we're trying to multiply to 1, it's 0, right? There's none of it in the middle. So what multiplies to negative 25 and adds to 0? The nice thing about these ones is you know one has to be positive, one's got to be negative, they've got to be the same number. So this one's negative 5 and 5. So this is equal to 4, x minus 5, x plus 5. Okay, two last ones. 
What multiplies to 64 and adds to negative 16? Negative 8 and negative 8. So x minus 8, x minus 8, which we know we can write as x minus 8 squared. You may recognize this one as a perfect squared trinomial, right? This one actually makes the square rather than the rectangles we've been doing. Okay, last one. We're looking to multiply to negative 9. And remember the trick with this one is there's really zero x's in the middle, so there's a zero at the bottom. We got a negative 3 and we got a 3. x minus 3, x plus 3. I guess something that I should st say, because I haven't actually pointed that out, is that you can definitely write this. This is the same as x plus 3 times x minus 3. So it doesn't matter the order you write your two factors in. It is equivalent. Okay, if you want to try this challenge one, the answer to it is, so what multiplies to 9y squared adds to negative 10y, you could say. We're just ignoring the x's. You'd have negative 9y and a negative 1y. So it's x minus 9y, x minus y. And that's your challenge if you want to figure out why that's true. But once again, it is a challenge. You don't have to.